Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of May. So let's pray as we start this new day afresh that God, in his mercy, has given to us. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God, of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made, and praise you for, for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Hallelujah. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. Death is swallowed up in victory. 
where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? And the Benedictus. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from an high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Be glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. <clears throat> and our psalm this morning is uh, Psalm 30. Psalm 30 is our psalm this morning. Psalm 30. First, the refrain. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you have healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored me to life from among those that go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to his holy name. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord of your goodness, have made my hill so strong. Then you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord, I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. 
Lord, you hide your face when we trust in ourselves. Strip us of false security and reclothe us in your praise that we may know you as the one who raises us from death as you raise your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect for this week, the fifth week of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. All right. Um, Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 18 is our Old Testament reading. Deuteronomy 18, from verse 9 to the end. Deuteronomy 18, 9 to the end. Okay. <coughs> Deuteronomy 18, 9 to the end. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination, or tells fortunes, or interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you are about to dispossess, listen to fortune tellers and to diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire any more lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to and he shall speak to them all that I command you. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name. I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, 
if that word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. The word of the Lord. Amen. So th two things. One is the is the practices of the the, the, the nations the, the, that that are in the land. They they practice all sorts of um, dark arts, dark magic, you could say, and necromancing. Um, they require they inquire of the dead. They they try to raise the you know try to speak to the dead. They they use omens. They they use fortune telling, divination, sorcery stuff. All these various types of um, speaking of trying to uh, the first place, trying to determine the future using these these things and trying to trying to speak to the dead um, who have already gone. These are practices that were common in the ancient world, and God's people must not practice any of these these things so so moses is he's saying when you go into the land that these people will be practicing these things you are not to do this you are to refrain from any form of dark arts any form of of what they call them black magic today but um and and and, and of course these things are still around it's not like they're no longer here the devil is still around so the darkness is still with us and sometimes, sisters and brothers, you hear of Christians dabbling in this sort of thing again. Um, you know, the, and, and you know, in some countries, it's, it's voodoo or you know, or obia or those sorts of things. And this, these are these are things that Christians are forbidden to get involved in. These are darkness, and we are in the children of the light. And we are not to engage in any form of dark magic or dark arts. So he said, you shall be blameless before the Lord your God. No, you shall, you shall be innocent. You shall not be partakers of these things. When, when God looks on us, he will know that we do not partake or participate in any of these um, um, dark, dark forms of of telling the future, of, you know, astrology is one of them as well. It's up there with all of these other practices. And astrology has been very much popular in, in our time, even tarot reading cards and all of these things that people use to, to tell fortune, fortune telling and so forth. All of these forbidden for the child of God. Um, and then, of course, God then said to Moses that he's going to raise up a prophet just like himself from among his, his people. And that prophet is going to be the, 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 the true prophet who is to come. So, And, of course, the New Testament sees this prophet or this, this prophecy fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is the prophet who God is going to raise up just like Moses who's coming in the spirit and power of Moses. And, and of course, the New Testament writers saw Jesus in that light. That's why when Jesus came on the scene, when John the Baptist came on the scene and they started asking, are you the prophet? <laughs> are you that prophet? And John said, no, I'm not. And Jesus, of course, was that prophet. And there is only one other thing to just mention here. The last bit, how the people said, how will we know who is a true prophet from who is not a true prophet? And there's one test that God gives here, one test. If what the prophet says does not come, come tr true or come to pass, then God did not speak through that prophet. Now, we've had prophets in our time, so-called prophets, who, who give word from the Lord. And those words never came to pass. There, for example, there were prophets who prophesied that Trump was going to win the election. Now, those were false prophets because that, those words did not come to pass. They did not come true. And the one test, the one test of a true prophet 
is if they prophesy things that come to pass. If they do not come to pass, then God did not speak through those people, those, 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 those self-proclaimed prophets. And, 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 and God says, you shall not be afraid of them because, because they speak their own words. They did not speak the words from God. All right, our New Testament reading, 1 Peter. <clears throat> so 1 Peter chapter, chapter 2, we're in chapter 2 this morning. 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 to 10. First Peter 2, 1 to 10. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. <clears throat> you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those, let me, let me read that again. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession that he may proclaim the excellences of that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light once you were not a people but now you are god's people once you had not received mercy but now you have received mercy amen the overriding principle, of course, in this text is, is God's chosen people. We are God's chosen people. So all of these, um, these expressions that Peter is using for the people of God, the church, were used of Israel, the people of God of old. They were the chosen people. Now we are the chosen people. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and so forth. A people for God's own possession. And notice, we are chosen by God. Once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. We are God's people because God has lavished his mercy on us. God himself has chosen us, just like he did the ancient people of, of Israel. He has chosen us to be his. But how has he chosen us? He's chosen us in his son, Jesus Christ, who is the cornerstone of the building that God is building. Now, So we are blocks, we are bricks in this building and Jesus is the cornerstone that holds up the building. He is the, the stone 
that the builders rejected that has become the chief stone. And, and, and so Peter is saying that God is building a house, a spiritual house. In fact, he's, he has a lot of metaphors here. God is building a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices to God. So that's us. That's the church. The church is that spiritual house, that holy priesthood that offers up spiritual sacrifices to God. And each of us, says Peter, are a building block in that house. And Jesus is the chief stone, the one uh, that all of us are, are, are connected to. Um, and and um, yeah. All right, let's... Let's leave that there because they're, they're, that, that's the first part of this that, that it's going to talk about how does that affect us. In the first verse, actually, he said we are to, because of this, we are to put away malice and hypocrisy and slander. And we are to grow in our faith. We are to grow like babies requiring milk. So we are to require the word of God so we can grow up into our salvation. And, and, and this, sisters and brothers, is the way we grow. We grow through the word of God. It is the word of God that is the milk for our souls. Like babies desire milk to grow, so we are to desire God's word, which is the spiritual milk by which we grow. So that is the way we are going to grow up. So sisters and brothers, if you do not desire this spiritual milk, then like a baby without milk, we will not grow. We will be stunted in our growth. We will, we will die spiritually, frankly, without the word of God, which is the spiritual milk for our souls. That's why I encourage people to get into the word, to study it, to read it, to mark it, to inwardly digest it, to meditate on it, because that is the way we grow. Sisters and brothers, just like babies, the word of God is milk for our souls. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this new day that you've given us. We thank you for your word. Just Peter reminds us that that word is pure spiritual milk for the soul, just like infants need that pure milk we need you the pure milk of your word that we may grow up into our salvation and so lord we pray that you will nourish us today and every day with the milk of your word so that we will be <clears throat> so that we will grow up and 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 become more like Jesus, as we are connected to him in this building, this living building that is made up of living stones and living uh, priesthood to offer you spiritual sacrifices daily. Lord, make us this kind of people, we pray. You have chosen us. You have uh, You have place your, your, your favor upon us. You have called us out of the darkness into your marvelous light. Lord, shine your light into our hearts today so that whatever we do, wherever we go, we reflect Christ. We reflect Jesus in our action, in our behavior, in our, in our attitude, in our words. Lord, Give us grace to grow and grow and grow more and more in, in, in our salvation, in the salvation that you have called us in through the power of your word, through the milk of your word, through the, the food of your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, Lord, as we Continue to pray for those <clears throat> on our hearts today. So, Lord, remember we pray in your mercy, those that are on our prayer, our prayer list in our 
church community. I pray for Duke and Pippa and Radcliffe and his wife Pauline. I pray for Doreen, Jean and Walter and Monica, Leon, Sue, Veronica and Chester, Dolly and Desmond, Jean Murphy, Joanna, Hannah, Todd, Pat, Pauline and Daphne, Muriel, David, Surya, Thelma, Veronica, Monica and daughter Cheryl, Una and Charity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, remember the world in which we live, a world that is broken in so many ways. We ask for you to mend the brokenness of this world. We ask, Lord, that you will bring peace where there is, where there is conflict. Lord, we pray that especially for, the, for Ukraine, and, and Sudan, for wherever there is conflict in our world, conflict in families, conflict among tribes, conflict in nations. Lord, bring your peace. We ask for your shalom uh, to, be, to be manifested in various corners of our world. So that there'll be no more violence, no more war, that human beings will find, will find peaceful ways of resolving their conflicts, resolving their, their problems other than through violence and war. And so Lord, we pray that you'll break, destroy, we pray, the weapons of war in Ukraine, Putin's war machine, bring destroy, we pray, those weapons that, that he is using to destroy and kill those people in Ukraine. Lord, destroy his weapons of war and change the heart of these people from hearts of killing and destruction to hearts of love and peace destroy the weapons of war in Sudan, guns and all these weapons that are using to, dis to, to, to cause havoc in that land. And change the hearts of the, these warring factions, Lord. We pray for those who are the go-between, who are trying to broker peace, that they will be successful in the task of trying to make peace between these warring, warring parties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So Lord, we pray for the church. <clears throat> we pray that, Lord, that, that you will bless your people everywhere. We pray, Lord, that you will grow your church more and more in our own community, but all over the world. So that people, people will turn to Jesus, the one, the only one who has the words of eternal life. And so, Lord, we pray, all those who are, who, who, have, who don't know him, uh, who, don't, who have never experienced the, re the risen Christ in their lives, Lord, we pray that your church will be a witness to his love and mercy and grace. So that those who look to us will see Jesus. Those who look to even the building will be drawn, will be attracted to Jesus. And so Lord, use us, we pray, as the salt and the light in our community, in our world. Shine the light of Christ through, the, through your people, through your church, in the darkness of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you.
that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And God, order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, in all that you do, wherever you go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.